What's happening, guys, and welcome to our weekly Impact Wrestling Review. I'm Keith, and I'm joined once again by Ro. What's going on, man? Yo, yo, what's going on, man? Not too much. Um, so we took a week off, kind of, I mean, you had stuff going on, but I think it was good to take that week and kind of reset ourselves. We were pretty uh, negative with our last review, so coming back in, I feel a little better about things. I really enjoyed the uh, uncaged episode. What would you think of the show overall? Yeah, I want to say out of the three episodes in Mexico, this was by far my favorite. Um, probably had much more to do with the fact that anytime Impact does these um, pay-per-view specials you know, on TV, obviously, like, you know, they do for the most part a fan, uh, fantastic job now. I'm not going to go that far into it. I mean, there's stuff I did like, so I will say I'm more on the positive end of this episode than last week's by far. Yeah, I would say it kept my attention more for the whole show. Like, you know, last week I was kind of tuning in and out. It just seemed like a lot of stuff that was very inconsequential happening. At least this, most of the things at least had some sort of build to it. Um, I mean, we did, of course, get a match that was kind of just thrown in there. And uh, <laughs> the... Um, the World Cup. It was very interesting the way they did it because I guess earlier in the day they announced there was going to be a trophy for the winner, winning team, but I don't think that was announced previously, was it? Uh, not the, to my knowledge. I mean, obviously a lot of times when they have these type of cups, that's usually the thing, but you know, you wonder had they kind of built this up, say, the, the first episode when they were in Mexico. I think um, we can look more forward to it compared to just it seems just kind of like throwing together like and i think we got the announcement last week so yeah 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 no i, I think at least you put some stakes on it at least you, like you said it seems a little more valuable but um i mean my girlfriend will vouch for this i don't pay attention or listen half the time so they could have said something weeks ago and i just missed it <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's start um we open the show with uh the knockout street fight Taya defending her knockouts championship against Tessa. Um, I thought this match was uh, really strong. I, I really enjoyed this outside of a few, you know, missed spots, I guess I, you would say, with their uh, table not breaking multiple times. I guess yeah, it was that... a table or a piece of wood or it looked like a piece of foam, to be honest. Yeah, that you're talking about the one that had a water look on it, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know what that was, and and I, you know, I'm one of these people like, I hate when sometimes they try to do the same spot to get it right, and it still ends up the same result. But yeah, this was really good, and I'm, I mean, I guess this is a way to blow off the feud between mm -hmm. them. But now you kind of wonder, and we always see this with a lot of times when you have a face champ, is who's next, and. Um, before, I don't know if you had anything to add on it. I'm, I want to let you... Oh, I got uh, a couple things to add on the match itself, but you can keep going with what you're uh, talking about. Well, go ahead. Share your thoughts, and then I'll, I'll go on what I wanted to share. It's kind of just, you know, post-match. post, post -match. I got you. No, um, they, they did a really good job making shots look very brutal. Like, and, uh, you know, not to take any credit away from... Or I don't want to take any credit away from Taya, but Tessa just... She's on a different level. I mean, the intensity she brings, you, you just, she makes everything very believable with her character. Um, scary spot where uh, they were setting up for the finish of the match, and one of the table legs went down, and uh, eventually Ty hit a double stomp through the table on Tessa, which was a nice finish. But um, interesting pin because it was on the table, yet it was on a slant. So I don't know, you know, for rules, ref, you know. If that uh, really counts, since it's not a flat surface. <laughs> and, you know, the the one thing I will say is I'm surprised they opened with this. I thought a match of this caliber, um, I mean, obviously, they're not going to put in the main event just because, you know, the world title. I mean, I guess they could have, but I would have at least put this after the cup, the World Cup I, I don't thought know. this was more more important than yeah, but than the World I, Cup. I feel like you know they have to open the sh show pretty strong, and I, I thought this really got the crowd into it and things like that. And you know, I don't know how it is with the uh, the viewers, like on Twitch, do people you know turn it on and see what's going on and then just tune out? You know, true. 
That's so, very true. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, how many times has Rich Swan started the show? <laughs> <laughs> it seems like every week the guy's out there starting it. Yeah, no, I guess that's a way to kind of cap off a show, especially if you're trying to give it a pay per view feel. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're gonna do go with the big match. Yeah. But and no, the the only thing I was just gonna add is, you know, so this is a blow off to the feud. Now, I just kind of wonder where was the direction both Taya and Tessa go. I mean, I think in Tessa's case, I mean, they were kind of pushing the, you know, her versus Gail. We really haven't seen too much follow up with that. And no. You know, <laughs> and I've been, you know, one of these people who thought, like, I don't see what she really benefits from facing Gail. But, you know, we'll, we'll just have to see. And then as far as Taya, I think this is the problem that they face sometimes with these face champions. Like, you have to have not just enough heels, but heels that can really seem like they're on the same level as the champion. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my guess is, you know, maybe have a feud with Dark Alley, Sue Young. Um, uh, you know, those are obviously the two that come to mind. I mean, the one thing I hope they don't do, and I mean, we'll, we'll I obviously we'll get into it. I think with Jordan Grace, because it seems like you know they have a lot of stock in her. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't push her too quick to that role. You know, give her some time to kind of you know um, feud with some other people. I should say before she gets to that level. But I think that's just my one of my things that I'm thinking about. I'm like, okay, well, who's next for Taya? So yeah. well, it's I think, interesting. I think Jordan and Kier are probably going to be stuck in this Ali Sue feud for a while. It seems like they're really going to drag that out. <laughs> you know, it, it's coming to show you, man, that that you know that's the one thing is you know it seems now with some of these departures i know obviously you know with joe hendry and you know diamante and etc whoever else has departed like is it does it hurt no but with a depleted roster it seems like we're getting these same type of matches you know week in and week mm -hmm. out and there, there's really no. nobody else for these people to face so it's starting to catch up with them yeah and i mean it Seems with what did we see Joe with at three? I think separate sets of tapings. He was at two in Canada, and then the last one was in Mexico, and that was it. I mean, they I guess they tried to keep him relevant by having him on the Twitch channel. They were doing what I think prestigious Tuesdays with Joe or something like that, and then they dropped that. And then I wasn't really surprised to see him leave, but I think this that had more to do with the uh, visa issues or the work visa issues because we've seen it happen with a few stars. That have come from out of the states. Yeah, uh, and obviously that's probably a, a big point. But I mean, yeah, we just kind of just seen it now. We're kind of getting the, the same mat, the same matches. We'll we'll get into it. I get you know more so, but yeah. I think it's just more apparent than ever. So and it just makes you wonder. Normally, when we're getting some of these departures, there's somebody who just came in. Like it seems like they're relying more on partnerships to kind of fill those voids of the people departing mm -hmm. but that can only go so far well you had a really good idea if you want to talk about it now which one <laughs> uh well just every time they go to like like you said with mexico oh you know my one of one of my ideas what i just thought and I guess you can call it fantasy booking but say you know you know mexico you're gonna tape for three episodes why not start some small storylines that can end up culminating you know whether it's the second or the last episode of impact i think that would you know get people you know a little bit more engaged and you know you gotta have some unpredictability factor into it like i think obviously when we talk about sometimes title matches so if you have you know one of impact's champions defending against one of mexico's you know, you have to kind of lay it out where there's an opportunity or hell, even do something where you do a title change. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the impact talent gets the title back, you know, before they leave Mexico. But just something like that, like, I think that would be pretty interesting. And then it, it gives us fresh matchups because, you know, we're seeing it every other week. The prime example, we see some kind of formation of. Sue Young, Dark Alley, Kiara, and Jordan Grace. Mm -hmm. It that that that's all it is. Like they can't separate from one another. And I think you know you go to Mexico and you know Dark Alley starts a feud with some you know Fabi Apache. I'm just throwing names out there, and then you know ends up culminating till the final episode. Like I think something like that. It'll 
it'll make it seem more more important yeah. instead instead of it just seem like oh you know this is going to be a show to pander to mm-hmm. the home crowd yeah you'd almost kind of make it like a, a territorial one where it's kind of impact versus mexico say or whatever they do and they make a series out of it and i think that would make the twitch events a bigger thing too when they go and face a another promotion there might be history there or something like that it just seems like they they could utilize the partnerships better i, I think that's that's pretty much what we're getting at right yeah, because, I mean, they've done it before. I mean, you think about it. I thought it was so cool. You think about when they did, uh, they had Eddie going over to uh, Noah, Pro Wrestling Noah, and he won the GHC Championship. Then we had Ishimori winning the X Division Championship. Mm-hmm. Like, that's how you utilize the part- the partnerships. Like, you you know, you want to be able to look at these people and while they're working with, on Impact or we send an Impact person over there, you know, they're, you know, they have the opportunity to capture one of their belts you know, instead of just appearing and just having random matches, so to right. speak. Right, and then you get a crowd familiar with somebody. Maybe they like them, they follow them, and that's how you bring in new fans. Well, there you go. But, you know, some things just seem more obvious and probably easier than they are actually to do. But, I mean, are we actually going to see anybody come back from Mexico with impact at the Vegas tapings? Yeah, I guess that's one of the things it seems now – you know, these partnerships, it, they seem more of like when they do the kind of the, it, it seems like they're more just when they're doing shows together. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, it doesn't seem like we get, like when we used to get with, you know, you got, had Phantasma and uh, Tahano appearing on Impact, you know, it, in the States or in right. Canada, I should I should say, I'm sorry, appearing in Canada. Like, well, it they, well, like the, previously when they were in Orlando, we had a lot of talent. There. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, there it seems like they've done away with Orlando. Mm, oh so, yeah. So um, yeah, and it doesn't seem we have that anymore. So these partnerships now, I mean, it. I mean, I don't know what to make of them now. <laughs> yeah. All right. So up next, we had the GWN flashback. This was Desmond Xavier versus Ishimori for the 2017 Super X Cup. So I guess the new thing now is that the fans are able to vote on which GWN flashback they get to see. So it's pretty cool. I like that they're making things more interactive uh, rather than having Scott and, or I should say Don and Josh during the commercial breaks, they actually had Melissa with uh, random talent each time because they were taping the uh, they were first day of the Vegas taping. So they were able to uh, kind of intertwine the two. So that was kind of cool. Um, one thing, and we've discussed this before. So since this was the, obvious or initial airing of uh, the uncaged show everybody going to the tapings in vegas were unable to see this so they were going in an episode behind <laughs> i mean just i guess <laughs> i guess that's what happens when you tape so far in advance you know it makes you wonder like didn't they kind of think this out well I, I'm sure all the dates were probably lined up before the network change and the time change and everything like that. So I think that probably played a factor. And sometimes I guess you just got to roll with the punches. <laughs> but it just makes and then see if you had a, a scenario where you had the and I know we beat this like a dead horse. But if you had the VOD, well, then at least it's like, hey, I'm going to catch it live tonight. And then, mm-hmm. you know, when I get home, I can watch what happened, what I miss. Nope, yeah. that's not an option. So. Yeah. Or if they, you know, for the fans in attendance, they, you know, played the show on the screen or something like that. Yeah, that would be a, a nice, a, you know, a nice gesture, but that might be asking a little bit too much. Yeah. All right. So then we have uh, Melissa interviewing Team Impact. Sammy appoints himself captain. He, I think, made that statement on Twitter earlier in the week. Uh, this starts a struggle, obviously, between the group. Then Eli takes control of the situation like he always should, and he gives the troops a pep talk. Um, did you watch this? I know it was uploaded to the uh, YouTube page. Yeah, I caught yeah. this. I, I thought I liked this. This was uh, shows you two of Impact's hottest. Well, you know, I don't even know. I think sometimes there's what some of us fans think is the top talent, and then there's what management thinks. So we'll just go with, uh, you know, my opinion and maybe yours as well. You tell me if it differs differs but you know two of impact's hottest talents and sammy callahan and uh, eli drake you know doing what they do mm-hmm. and uh i just really wish this wasn't something that was overlooked like don't get me wrong 
you know, the main event scene that we have right now is cool, but I could easily see these guys thrusted into the main event scene. And then you have a core six guys. Right. Right. And they had originally talked about core talent and, I don't know if that seemed to go by the wayside, but it just seems like their whole roster is now, I guess, core talent. It's, <laughs> it's I mean, dropped significantly. Um, but yeah, no, Eli just doing great things like he normally does. Just y- you believe everything he says. He's everything seems like I said. He just seems like he's on another level from everybody else. And I, I guess a lot of us see that, and maybe it doesn't translate to management or I don't know. I I just don't have any idea why things are the way they are. It's weird because even to like even see with Callahan a little bit now, they I feel in some ways they kind of um well okay, I guess I wouldn't go that far, but I was thinking of like say with like a Bray Wyatt, you know how he was good on the microphone. They'd put him in these feuds and he'd you know mo- for the most part be on the losing end. Oh yeah. And I feel like they with Callahan, they feel like, well, it doesn't matter if he wins or loses loses, you know, it's Callahan, it'll still be good. But you know, the man has momentum and stuff. Why he's not a champion is, you know, boggles my mind. And with Eli, you know, it's come to the point <laughs> And I know as us <laughs> as us being fans of the product, you know, like I kind of want him to leave and go somewhere where I feel like he can reach the potential that that I know he's capable of. Because I think this is just a prime example of a regime changing and them not having the same vision for Eli that the mm. previous one did. Right. Yeah. And that was, I think, a very bright spot and something we probably make out more than it it was because like we had said uh, off the pod that you know when th- between the regime changes when Jarrett left and Don and Scott came in there was a time where you know we didn't think the product was bad but I think that was because it was spotlighted by the person we wanted to see as champion and I maybe in a different light that makes it better than it actually was I don't know yeah, and I mean, you know, and I hate to kind of like, you know, think like that as far as like, okay, well, I'm unhappy because, because, oh, my favorite's not champion. It's not so much that, but I think the problem that I have is, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, you'll see people not being utilized. And then, you know, a lot of the fans will be like, well, who should they bring in? You know, like, you already got people not being utilized. Why do you, you know, why result to bring someone from off the street? We've seen that method time and time again. It doesn't work. Whoever they bring in, it's not changing anything. So if the people that you're bringing in aren't moving the needle, why not just stick with what you got, roll with it if you're going to get the same result? And I think that's that's my thing. You know, they were so hell-bent when you think about with Eli's, you know, when he was champion, they were so hell-bent on showcasing El Patron, and while he did have his fans too, he didn't push the needle any more than Eli was doing. So you might as well just stick with Eli, but yeah. you got to push El Patron because the money that you've invested in it. That's in true. Him, so, yep. yeah. So up next we have Ethan Page versus Willie Mack. Um, no build, build really to this match. Kind of just happened. I don't know if we're going to build off of it. Uh, Willie ends up picking up the victory after hitting Ethan with a stunner. Um, I mean, for what it was, I thought it was a decent match. Two guys that, uh, you know, have are pretty good in the ring. So we knew we were going to get a decent quality match. But where it goes from here, probably nothing. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I think Ethan Page is one of these guys. Like, how do you build him? You know, he seems like one of these. He's I, I wouldn't be surprised. In a couple weeks, he's wrestling Willie Mac again. Mm-hmm. It seems like he does a Willie Mac. He wrestles one of the rascals, and then <laughs> you know it goes back and forth. Like that's why we're seeing with the depleted roster, it's even harder to kind of build these talents because you know someone has to win, someone has to lose. Right. And then Will- Willie too, he's another guy, man. That you know they could do some stuff with, but yeah, yeah. you know they for for what we got, it was fine. But you know, just sheer randomness. Yeah. And then backstage, we have a Killer Cross promo. He says Johnny is going to need a miracle to get out of this one tonight. And then we see uh, Willie make his way backstage after the match, and the Chris brothers follow him into, I guess, a locker room. And that was all we saw. Um, so I guess I, Willie is going to continue being a part of this whole OVE's uh, Rich Swan feud. Uh, then Melissa interviews Team AAA. 
And then we get Sammy coming to the ring, and he calls out Rich Swan. He tells Swan that they can do things the easy way or the hard way. Swan, he tries to hand him the shirt again. Swan throws the shirt into Callahan's face. Callahan hits Swan with the mic. Swan eventually gets the upper hand, but Sammy ends up poking him in the eye and then hits a pilot driver on the stage. The refs come out. He hits one of them, suspension incoming maybe, and then he throws Swan off the stage through a table. So it seems like they're finally getting to the point where we're going to uh, get a match out of the two of these guys. Now, this I did enjoy because I thought, you know, and I know initially I was like, it just seemed kind of random, but they've built on this. And it comes to show you sometimes when they give us a little bit of storyline, um, you know, some background of it, you know, the two participants, like this is interesting now. And then not only that, you know, this is going to probably be for the exhibition title, which is yeah. great in its own right. So to me, that that that's awesome. And. I'm hoping that, and look, I'm not saying so much like, oh, because I like Callahan, he needs to win. But, you know, hopefully if they drag this out, like I think they will, you know, hopefully they capitalize on this momentum that Callahan has. Because Callahan, you know, I, you know, he, he says it best, the MVP of 2018 by far. Mm -hmm. And it's time to reward him. Right, exactly. And, uh, well, let, let, we'll talk about this now. Up next, we had it, Team Impact versus Team AAA. So it seemed like um, Team AAA was kind of made up of just a bunch of random talent. And let's look at Team Impact side. We had Eddie Edwards, former multi-time champion, multi-time multi-belts. Eli Drake, former world champion. Sammy Callahan, wrestler of the year. And then Falaba, a guy who's super over with the crowd. And they lost. And then not only that, man, and this has been, uh, um, I remember me mentioning this before in the Impact Lounge, there was, I forgot who had mentioned it, I mean, I wouldn't drop no names anyways, but they were talking about how Impact will bring their stars, and like when they're doing some of these promotions, I guess, uh, uh, especially with AAA, and they'll be essentially facing like mid to lower, um, lower tier guys, mm -hmm. and you know, you figured they should be facing uh, AAA's top stars, you know, to ma match with Impact stars. Right. But they'll face lower, you know, the lower level talent and, and have their talent lose to the lower level talent. Um, Look, this by far, <laughs> we, we knew, we knew, and I, I even told you. Oh, I, I know. said, I said, I Mexico, didn't want to believe it. <laughs> Team Mexico's winning this. I mean, um, I mean, they could have gone caught in so many different ways. I mean, you know, you could add the distraction roll up that I know a lot of people hate, and then you have Team Impact attack AAA or whatever. But this, if there was ever pandering, this was it mm -hmm. by far. Yeah. Um, Eli first got eliminated by Puma King, and then Falaba eliminates Vikingo. Uh, Aerostar eliminates Falaba. Eddie eliminates Aerostar. Sammy eliminates Puma King, Psycho Clown eliminates Sammy, and then that's when Eli Drake comes back out, hits Eddie with the kendo stick, and Psycho Clown rolls him up, giving AAA the victory. So, I mean, I guess they're building. I, I couldn't, I, I didn't, I kind of seen it briefly. Was it intentional that he hit Eddie, or was it unintentional? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. 100% intentional. I mean, most of the victories that AAA got was you know, due to Team Impact not getting along. And I guess that was probably the big story here. But like I said, this this goes to show that you, the, the talent that has left that's not, you know, that could have been utilized in this rather than the talent they used, I guess. I mean, I guess they were going for the aspect that they wanted to build some more storyline things with Eli and Eddie being on the team. But, I mean, that's that's about it. I mean, they, they could have done, you know, if it had been me, I thought it would make sense. You know, you do KM and follow and then probably the Rascals. Well, you know, I don't know if gonna... KM's allowed in Mexico or what the deal is, but he wasn't at either set of Mexico tapings. <laughs> and then, hey, I don't know where we are to, in his 45 days. I mean, I know he had just tweeted that, but yeah. That's March 1st thing. was the day. That's what I had heard. Oh, wow. Yeah. Him and Conley, and apparently, I guess, Impact already moved Conley to the, uh, forget the Alum word. Yeah, alumni. alumni, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. So. You know, the, how you do that while somebody's still on the roster. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't know. 
don't know. Yeah, this was this was what it was. That's uh, pretty much it. Like you said, they did it for the Mexico crowd, and you know that's that's another thing. It seems like things done for the pandering to the crowd doesn't always translate well to the watching audience on television or Twitch, whatever. And I guess, you know, the biggest takeaway, like you were saying, I guess is to further the Eddie and Eli feud, which, you know, I thought we were going to kind of get the tag team that doesn't uh, really get along, which, I yeah. mean, I, you know, with the participants involved, I would have been fine with it, but I guess we're Honestly, just going to get a feud. I think they should have played off the whole uh, Swan Callahan thing and just did Sammy OVE and Rich Swan as a team and you know, you kind of have it fizzle from there. Yeah, I mean, or even just, yeah. Yeah, I think that would have been perfect. Yeah, but, you know, booking after the fact and, you know, hey, you don't always get what you want. <laughs> I mean, that's 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 just life. Um, and then we had, uh, you know, my favorite part of the night where we have multiple uh, backstage segments and things like that in a row. Uh, before the main event, we got a recap of LAX and Lucha Brothers from last week. And we see LAX backstage. Obviously, all of them are angry from last week's loss. Conan says he's going to get the rematch, but they are going to do things his way this time. So I don't know what that entails, but I would assume we're going to get that match during the Las Vegas tapings. I know Phoenix was injured at a show recently, but he seemed like he was uh, back in action already. Um we had originally heard that he was going to take or he was supposed to rest for a few weeks, but I guess that wasn't in the cards. He was probably booked too many places to do that. You know, I worry with him, um, you know, with the team itself that, you know, and I get it, you know, you're in demand, you know, to be able to, to um, be highlighted in all these promotions is an awesome thing. But, you know, when I, I guess my thing is like this, when, if I were, just just my own personal opinion. If I was a promotion and I'm booking these guys, I would be careful putting them in major storylines only because them working so many shows, like obviously I know, you know, with wrestling anything can happen. You can, you know, get injured just doing a, a clothesline, you mm -hmm. know, obviously if you do it wrong. But I think, you know, the workhorses this team, you know, the, the team seems to be like, injury here or there and if you have them a part of major storylines in your promotion that can really derail a lot of things yeah and you know with his injury now I, I get it with like an impact case since they tape you know so far ahead i mean that gives him time you know enough time to depending the injury obviously to kind of heal up but you know you just gotta kind of just be mindful of the angles you put them in because when i seen seen this uh injury announced you know, and you know, luckily it seemed like it's okay. But I was like, wow, they just won the titles and yeah. you know, he's hurt. So now what are we gonna do? I mean, I doubt that they would strip them for the titles. You're just gonna leave the titles on them and we're not gonna see them be defended until he gets healed. Like that's you know, not the best idea. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I just think that's just kind of just a concern for any of these talents that work the multiple you know, multiple promotions. Just kinda gotta be careful like how you book them within impact just because you know, you're you know, if they're heavily involved in impact storylines, excuse me, and they go mess around and get hurt, yeah, you know, it's gonna affect impact storylines. Yeah, and I mean that's a big thing we've talked about, exclusivity and things like that. I mean, I don't know if we actually talked about it on the pod or not, but uh right before homecoming there was a show, I think it was Warrior Wrestling, the day before, and like you know, nine tenths of the wrestlers that were going to be on homecoming were wrestling the day before and you know it just brings up concern you you have to change your entire card because of something bad happens so it's a tough situation yeah and i think what happened i think the most notable one was uh, at slam reversary i think rich swan had worked uh mlw i think uh, before and got a concussion, mm -hmm. so they had to take him out of the match. And I mean, luckily, it was one of these multi man matches, so right. it wasn't that big of a deal. But could you imagine, you know, just say you have a card, you have all these wrestlers advertised, and heaven forbid they were to get injured, yeah, like that mess. Daenerys gets injured, and all of a sudden, <laughs> your cha world champion isn't there, yeah. And, and that's why I said the position that impacts in. And I get it, you know, they were so big on, you know, not, you know, wanting to give talent the freedom to 
you know, work different promotions. But I thought that they should at least try to have some type of agreement with the talent that, hey, you know, whether it's pay-per-view or something like that, can we do something where you don't work shows of that weekend? Right. And I mean, I know that might be a lot to ask from talent because, you know, you know, that's probably that, you know, they're making their living, but you know, that way it doesn't affect what they got going on. But yeah. 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 Uh, then we have Allie and Sue Young backstage. Allie says the shadow is playing mind games. A message is written on the board behind them. I'm not a hundred percent sure what it said, but I believe it said the witching is upon us. Don't, don't say we didn't warn you. Um, so yeah, a little bit there. Then Scarlett hypes up the Vegas tapings, which they were taking place at this point, uh, saying she will make her in-ring debut and Sin City will never be the same. So I'm looking forward to her debut. It should be, uh, I mean, she should be a great addition to the Knockouts roster. I'm really hoping they they do something pretty big with her. And you know what? She could be somebody, obviously, they'd have to build. But, you know, when I was talking earlier about who can, who's maybe a heel that will be able to uh, face Taya, she might be something if proper built that they can thrust in their role right and then uh we got an announcement for matches next week uh the only one they had announced on the show i believe was eli drake versus eddie edwards and then i just checked before on twitter and they had announced delicia edwards versus delilah doom and the rascals versus the desi hit squad (laughs) (laughs) you know now if you told me if you uh, if you would have told me hey the rascals are wrestling next week I would have guessed either. Well, I don't think they faced OVE yet, but I would have said the Desi Hit Squad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, amazing. Yeah, I, limited. You know, like we said, limited roster. You have limited matches, and that sets us up for our main event: Johnny Impact defending against Killer Cross, Moose, and Brian Cage. Um, what were your over- overall thoughts of this match? I thought for what it was advertised, this is pretty much our main event. And, you know, the one thing at first I was taken aback by, because I, I really wanted to see how Cross and Moose, how they were going to work together and if we were going to see them kind of interact with one another. And they ended up doing so. And I thought that helped in Moose's case, because I kind of had thought originally that you got these three people. Obviously, you got the champion, the challenger, and then, you know, the two challengers and, you know, just Moose. But I thought Moose interacting with Killer Cross, you know, shows that he's just as much of a threat as Cross and Cage. But, you know, I, I thought it was fine. Um, you know, I thought the ending, I mean, <sighs> I, I guess my, my thing is like this. It seems so much, and I was talking to this on, uh, offline about it, you know, for people that are all against Johnny, you know, oh, you know, he's a cornball. I don't know about you, man, but I feel like they're forcing Cage down our throats to this point because the way that that match ended, you can tell there's going to be some type mm-hmm. of uh, continuity about, oh, Cage feeling he got screwed, which he didn't. He pinned Cross, right. but they they counted a uh, uh, Johnny Impact's pin mm-hmm. before before Cage's, and I guess the argument would be you know Cage was supposed to get a one on one match, which okay, but I just feel they're they're pushing the Cage, uh, you know they like the thing with Impact, and we, I think we might have mentioned this before, and what kind of bothers me is when they when there's a certain person they want champion. You know it, like it's they clear. make it, yeah, yeah. They is as broad as daylight, like you know, because they'll keep just kind of just. It, they did this with Johnny when Johnny mm-hmm. was chasing chasing the championship. You know, he just kept getting opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. Like this match should have been a way where, you know, going into Vegas, we should see a new challenger emerge. I don't think we're gonna get that. Like my opinion, they might try to do this for these four again, but I really thought. If they wanted to do a title change, this would have been a perfect opportunity yeah. to do so. Um, well, I, I don't know. I think they should have played it like, like you said that the just the Johnny baby face just isn't. I don't know. They're just not, something's not clicking there with it, and he should really be booked more of an underdog. Like I mean, Cross has said he is, but it, I don't really get that feeling because I mean, when you look at all four of these men, it's uh, very apparent that one thing is not like the other three. <laughs> I mean, these are three big guys, and then Johnny, you know, he could be in the X division at cruiserweight. Um, but yeah, I, I 
there's a couple things I wasn't a huge fan of. You know, Cage not selling crosses Saito, which is supposed to be, you know, I guess one of his signature moves. I, I, I don't know. Little things like that. Yeah, that pisses me off. Like, it, it really does because Cross is a big dude in his own right. And it's kind of like if you're going to decide to put the belt on Cage, Cross and Moose are the two that need to be built strong enough where they would be viable challengers. Right. And, I and mean, at least at least when he faces Moose, like, he sells Moose's uh, offense a bit more. But, yeah, that pisses me off when he, you know, uh, Cross, whatever Cross does, and he just pops up and mm-hmm. it, uh, and you know 100% that it was either Moose or it was Cross taking the pinfall in this match. Yeah, it it's kind of if they really wanted to continue on the the uh, um the whole Cage and and Impact uh feud rivalry whatever, why not have Cage, you know, when Cage hits, hits the drill claw, Johnny throws um, Johnny, let me make sure I pause because I don't want to make it seem like I'm talking about the Mortal Kombat character. But <laughs> Johnny throws Cage out the ring and then capitalizes on the pin. That way, at least you're capitalizing on. I mean, not not capitalizing. I'm sorry, but that way you're you're you know kind of sticking with the whole Johnny getting lucky and you know mm-hmm. essentially screwing Cage. But I don't see how he screwed Cage in this one. He got yeah. the pin, and it just happened. He got the pin before Cage did. So it was clean and done. Yeah, so, and, you know, we, we've talked about it. I, I really think they should, you know, put the boat on cross and then just have Cage chase cross. But, I mean, I don't know. I just kind of feel like we're getting forced, you know, getting Cage forced down our throat. And like I said, for me with Johnny, I feel like booking has felt Johnny. I thought the route that they were going with him, having him face Killer Cross, even at final hour, that's the type of heel you want your baby mm-hmm. face to face. And they could have drawn that feud out and, it would have been fine, but when you're doing the face versus face, the crowd is going to end up want to, want, turning one of the people heel anyways. Yeah. So it, it just I don't, I don't know, but I, I just kind of just feel like like you know how many times are we going to see Cage get a title shot? Like move on now. Yeah. No, and then it's going to be Cage picks up the title, fans are going to start to sour on him, and then we're going to want to turn him heel. Well, there the company is going to want to turn him heel. <laughs> <laughs> well, that and what's going to end up happening. Is it's gonna be like the LAX effect, you know? You put the belt in cage, you're gonna run through the roster, then the title reign is gonna get stale. Like mm-hmm. if they're if if he's the guy, they need to have enough people just for any of these face champions. You need to have enough heels at least, or enough challengers, viable challengers before you have that that big major one. And with the state that impacts in with you know the roster depletion. You worry. That's why I've always kind of believed when the heels champion, I feel like there's so much more that they can do mm-hmm. compared to when you put it on a face. But um, well, the ch- the face chasing a belt is always always the best route to go. Definitely, definitely. But I mean, you know, it is what it is. That's it. Um, I was going to bring up a point. Oh, uh, if, uh, since we saw a little dissension versus Cross and Moose, I, I really don't see them making one of these guys a face and the other one a heel. I guess it'll just be the two of them doing their own thing and or I guess being the bad guy character facing each other just because they want the title. <laughs> you know, it'd have been cool. Um <clears throat> excuse me. I mean, I know this is just, you know, out of you know ordinary, but <laughs> I imagine they would have done something bizarre and had like a double pin, you know, moose and you know uh, and uh kill across do a double pin. I I mean <sighs> I guess that kind of de- devalues Johnny, but I-, I was thinking of something when they had the multi submission on him or something like that, and Johnny just passes out from the pain. To do something like this, then you next week you want to tune in. Like, all right, so what's going to happen with the bell? Give me a reason to tune in next week. This was cut and dry. Johnny's still the champion. And that's it. Yeah, and, and and all I'm just saying, and now that I'm part of any Johnny fan club, but. You know, people are so down on him. Like, you got to look at just how he's booked. There's not so much him. Yeah, you can get on him for the promos. And I really oh, think... Last week was a- bad, that backstage segment with him <laughs> finding out it was a fatal four-way. That, they, that was just something else. You know, if you know the man's that bad on the mic, then don't put him in positions like that. Or, you know, you have him cut something small and, you know, do away with it. But if he's bad on the mic now, like, turning him hill, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Yeah. You, you gotta know, so. protect your champion some way. Yeah, but uh, 
Yeah, like I said, overall, though, I mean, the show, just for me, I mean, it was better than the previous episodes in Mexico. But, yeah, man, I mean, I'm looking at Vegas now, and um, I have some mild optimism, but it just seems now, like, you just see it more and more with the roster being, I think, it's thinnest, like, you know, maybe we're going to see some debuts. Maybe we see more departures. I mean, we just have to wait and tune in, I guess. Yeah, that's all we can do week to week. Like I said, I thought overall the show, yeah, like you said, was better than the other Mexico shows. Most things were built, too. So, um, yeah, overall solid show. And uh, hopefully next week uh, continues the trend upward. We did see an, an increase in viewership this week. I think they topped out probably close to around 9,000. And last week it was, what, about 6,000? 6200 so at least there was uh some interest in the show i know the youtube numbers did pretty well for at least the main event and the uh knockouts championship match i'm just gonna pull it up here right now see what we got the tessa and taya street fight had forty-eight thousand views and the fatal four world title four-way had forty-five thousand views so title matches man they draw <laughs> they do they do that is for sure even though we had a title change last week and it didn't seem like it seemed like people tuned out to the, during the main event uh i mean maybe i don't know my theory was it seemed predictable you know you figure their favorites in mexico they're getting another title shot it was inevitable <laughs> yeah that's a fair point so I think we are good here, unless you have anything else left to add. No, I'm just, uh, and I hate to sound so down on Mexico tapings, but I'm happy that they're going back to, to the States, preferably Vegas. I feel, you know, at least then they can book the show how they normally would book it and not have to worry about trying to pander to, you know, the Mexico crowd. That is true. That is a good point. So... Thank you, everybody, for checking out our podcast. Ro, thanks again once for joining me. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.